Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, we're going to make a honeybee mason tumbler using products from the PDB Creative Studio Art Resin Box. This is going to be pretty lengthy, so let's go ahead and jump in. Now, I know who y'all were going to ask, so let me go ahead and address the items that are in the box. These boxes have already sold out. PDB does these boxes a couple of times a year and you want to make sure that you are really on top of grabbing one of them because they're packed full of lots of items that you can benefit from in your craft space and with your business. Mostly everything that is in the box is exclusive to it. So you may see some trickle onto the PDB Creative Studio website on Wednesdays whenever they do their new releases. However, they will be limited edition items, and once they're sold out, they will be gone. I'm already seeing some things in the what's new section that were included in this box, and of course, there were additional variations. You, If you got one of these, you got the same value in your box. You may have just got a little bit different item or a different color. So if you see something that I use that catches your eye, Make sure you're checking the PDB Creative Studio website Wednesdays at 12 p.m. MST time. All right, so we took our mason jar and it had one of those little covers. Uh, I call it a sticker on the bottom covering up that little divot. I always take those off because for whatever reason, they never seal really good for me and it allows air bubbles to come through as my epoxy is curing. So I pop that off. It doesn't affect the quality of the cup at all. I used a foam to attach the mason part to the turner arm, and then I used a craft crate chuck on the end of my turner arm and just put some tape on there to help attach the lid. This is actually the first time that I have ever Yes, I've been making tumblers for three years. <laughs> this is the first time that I have ever decided to decorate a mason jar lid. I have blinged one before, but I typically try to stay away from very small projects. You don't see me make a lot of keychains, pins, tumbler lids, <laughs> because I, I just don't have the patience for it, honestly. And cutting things smaller and working on a smaller surface... I just kind of lose my patience and it just doesn't work out right, but I'm doing this for y'all, okay? So, <laughs> after I have spray painted the base, which is absolutely not the color that would match anything, I just didn't have any gold, so I went with the sort of closest color, I guess you can say, that I had in my spray paint collection. And then we're going to go over with my Southern Belle Glitter Full Glue. I did not realize that I didn't get the lid on this all the way, so it looks mega thick, and I definitely need some more. Y'all know if you've seen my past tutorials, this is one of my favorite glues to work with, and it typically is pretty thin, and it goes on really nice and smooth. Once I have my glue smoothed out and it's nice and even, I'm going to dry that up with my heat gun and then we'll apply it to the lid as well. This glue is just incredible. It's honestly, you could use it for glitter application even after it's dry because it has such a great tackiness to it. And because it is dry, whenever you apply your micas, fulls, glitter, whatever you're doing, you can go straight into spray sealing and epoxy. So there's no wait time for your adhesive to dry. So once we have this glue dried up, I'm gonna use Stinger from the box. Now I made a big mistake here and y'all will see what I mean here in just a minute. This says Chameleon Flakes. I used Chameleon Powder on my Boot Scoot and Boogie Peekaboo Halloween Tumbler that I did a tutorial on. And I honestly, it didn't click in my head that there was that big of a difference. 
there's a huge difference because the powder you're going to get a ton of micro fine powders just like a mica in this tiny little jar and it is going to go a very long way chameleon flakes are intended to sprinkle into your epoxy to give a little extra something to your top coats or to even sprinkle on your tumblers before you add on your glitters just to give a little more dimension so I was really dumping this on here thinking that I was going to be able to do the entire tumbler and the lid and then I sort of realized like midway hey you're running out <laughs> and honestly I was so annoyed with myself that I didn't think of that first because I would have absolutely sprinkled this on and then used the glitter that come into the box to do the remaining parts of the tumbler and just rubbed it in using the tacket method but i ended up just doing small sections all over the tumbler so it would be the same all the way around and then i grabbed fortune which is a chameleon powder which i thought the first one was and finished off the rest of the tumbler and filled in all of those areas Fortune is not available on the PDB Creative Studio website. I'm almost positive that it is either a discontinued item or one that was in another one of PDB Creative Studio boxes. If you want to create a similar effect, which I actually think turned out a happy accident because I loved the dimension and the rustic look of the way the tumbler turned out, then you can check out the mica section as well as the full fragments on pdbcreativestudio.com and use a combination of the full fragments and the mica powders and you will get a very similar effect. Once I had all areas covered, I went straight into spray sealing these and then gave it a coat of epoxy. I should have put two coats of epoxy on this before adding on what was supposed to be temporary vinyl. Uh, just talking about it makes me cringe because I, it's such a rookie mistake of putting vinyl that I intended to remove over top of one very thin layer of epoxy. Now, if my epoxy would have been over glitter that I used the epoxy method to apply, it would have been a much stronger bond. But since we used spray paint and then a glue, that's, I would almost say that glue is fluffy <laughs> where epoxy is a very strong hold. And then I put a powdery mica on top of that. You're not going to have a very strong base to remove vinyl or even reposition vinyl if you're not doing a peekaboo. So anytime you use micas or something that's thin on top of a glue adhesive rather than the epoxy method to apply your glitters, you want to make sure you have two coats of epoxy on there so when you remove your stencil or your vinyl, you're not moving your epoxy along with it. For our honeycombs, I downloaded some images from Creative Fabrica and then I created a shape the same size as my tumbler in Design Space and just placed my honeycombs in position so that I can create a full wrap. This makes it so much easier to apply all at one time and you also want to make sure that you're using a temporary vinyl or a stencil stencil vinyl would have been perfect for this but i didn't have any on hand this was supposed to be temporary vinyl but it was literally hanging on for its life on there so there must have been a mix-up somewhere <laughs> it was terrible i did not do anything to the lid at this point it was left as is and just a coat of epoxy on it we will get to that here in a bit but after i spray painted my tumbler 
I went back in with some of that full glue from Southern Bell Glitter and we're going to use this to apply our full fragments. The full fragments are the black and gold that of course come in the box. If you've worked with the full fragments before, you know they are super messy. You'll have little pieces flying up through the air <laughs> and you will be wearing a lot of it by the time you finish your tumbler. But they are very beautiful and pretty easy to work with. As you can see, I'm just sprinkling some on a little bit goes a long way and you want to make sure that you are really rubbing those fragments down and then you can take a paintbrush in the end and brush any of the excess off so your epoxy will go on nice and smooth. Now, since this is the top layer of my tumbler, I really should have thought it through and used this as my coat, my initial coat on my lid. It would have made a whole lot more sense to have this as the base rather than what we have underneath. So when I finished adding on my full fragments, I spray sealed this so it would stay in place whenever we removed our stencil and epoxied. As you can see, I'm having a heck of a time trying to get this so-called temporary vinyl to remove from the tumbler. And then whenever I finally get it to pull up, it actually pulled up some of my micas underneath and a little bit of the epoxy. I had a moment of silence, so I didn't throw my tumbler because this is the only mason jar tumbler that I have, so I can't mess it up. <laughs> Took a deep breath and then removed all of those stencils incredibly slow, so I didn't mess anything else up. And then I gave it a coat of epoxy. Actually, I gave it two this time <laughs> before I added on my decals. And this time we're using UV DTF which a lot of people have asked me if you can use this style of decal underneath epoxy. And yes, you can. I um, was pretty excited to be able to use these. I just haven't had time to test any theories between work, just being insanity, sicknesses have hit us, gosh, all year long, it seems like. And my daughter going back to school, I just, I have been running around like a crazy person over here and haven't had much time to dedicate to my craft room. So anyway, <laughs> I used the biggest floral cluster from the sheet to cover up the bad spots on the tumbler. And it actually covered them up pretty well. You can see a spot kind of peeking through in a couple places, but honestly, unless you get up close and eyeball it, or if you knew it happened, then you wouldn't even know it was there. So while I was placing these, I was trying to think and I guess observe all of the positives and negatives to using these on a tumbler or project. So the biggest thing is for me is they are not removable. I use a lot of removable vinyl decals from Gracefully Created and Slide Hustle. And honestly, sometimes it just feels like a lifesaver because I put one of those decals down and I don't like where it's at. I can easily remove it, trim off any little spots that maybe I put fingerprints on and reapply it as many times as I need to. These are very much like rub-on transfers. Once they are in position and they are stuck down to your tumbler, they're stuck. If you remove them, a lot of times you will damage 
or not damage, but scuff up your epoxy layer beneath them. So you will have to sand after you remove it, get any residue off from the back of the decal, apply a layer of epoxy, and then try again, but less your decal, which really sucks, but these are very beautiful. They are very vibrant, as you can see, and they have multiple purposes. You do not have to put a layer of epoxy on these, so you can not only use them under epoxy on your epoxy tumblers, but you can apply these directly to pens, keychains, acrylic cups, cold cups, uh, the glass beer can style tumblers, and not worry about having to put a layer of epoxy on them. Whereas the vinyl decals, you must seal them in with epoxy. Another thing was the transfer paper or film that's on top of the UV DTF decals is incredibly sticky. It's really strong, so I'll, as I was removing it, I did leave a couple little spots of residue behind, which I could easily remove with Goo Gone. But once you remove with Goo Gone, you do have to wash it with some Dawn to remove any grease before you do epoxy. And one way to avoid having to scrape these off if you put them in a bad position or if you just don't like the way they look on your design, you can cut these out, get as close to the decals as possible, and use a painter's tape to just put a little bit of tape on the back side of the decals and place them on your tumbler without removing any of the backing or the transfer tape kind of gives you an idea of placement and it also lets you see how it will look on your tumbler or your project before you really put them in their permanent spot. Once I finished my decals, I sealed it in with Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Coat, a very light dusting. I was afraid that they would crack, very similar to the rub-on transfers. So I held my tumbler a pretty good ways away from my spray paint can and did just a very light dusting of that matte Rust-Oleum. That gives it a little bit of texture and something for the epoxy to hold on to. I then gave it two final coats of epoxy, the first being Turbo from A Little Extra Incorporated, and then for the final layer, I used their regular epoxy. Now, I mentioned before that I really wish I would have used the full fragments to coat this lid initially, so I decided to add it in in one of the final coats of epoxy on it. And unfortunately, the color bled from the black full fragments. Sometimes they are really, really pigmented and it can cause the color to bleed a little bit, especially after you use heat. And that's just what happened here. So that's why it looks like a hot mess, but that's okay because we really just wanted a base on this so that we can apply our rhinestones. But moral of that story is don't use these mixed in your epoxy, the full fragments, because the color of the black can bleed. And if you place them on a tumbler, you do want to make sure you seal them in before you apply your epoxy so that black ink does not swirl around on you. I gave this lid a light sand so our glue had something to grip onto. And then we're going to place our rhinestones from the box around the straw hole around the outer edge of the rim, and then I'm going to flip it sideways and do a ring around the bottom side of the lid as well as the top, close to that top rim. This is gonna help get everything straight around all of the edges, and then we can fill in in between.
I added on one of our little bees that come in the box to the top of the lid because we are going to add some of those to the tumbler as well. And then placed all of my stones around it, filled in all of those areas. And then here we're adding on the last few rhinestones, which is so satisfying because these rhinestone projects do take quite a while, especially if you're using the scatter method, which by the way, I have to give huge props to Suzanne at PDB Creative Studio for including SS6 and SS4 rhinestones in this mix. It made me so happy to see those tiny little filler rhinestones in this. I absolutely despise seeing rhinestone tumblers that have gaps in them. That is not okay because rhinestone tumblers are very expensive and the last thing that I want to see when I pay a pretty penny for a rhinestone tumbler is big gaps. If a SS6 or SS4 stone can fit in a gap, it doesn't need to be there. So thanks Suzanne for including those teeny tiny rhinestones to make my OCD very happy. Now I would say I probably used about half of this pack on the lid. Since it is a mixture of the larger and smaller stones, it's going to cover a smaller area than, of course, just buying a bag of SS20. So if you are able to grab one of the gorgeous mixes from the PDB Creative Studio website, make sure you grab two or three. That way you can finish your complete project without having to scramble and <laughs> trying to collect more rhinestones in the end. These packs go really fast and normally I try to get myself two or three at a time. So if I decided to do a, say a 24 ounce plump from Tipsy Magnolia, I will have plenty of stones to finish my project. Once my lid was complete, I gave it about 24 hours to dry completely before taking some Dawn dish soap and a scrub brush to it to really bring back that luster of the rhinestones. And then we are going to place some of our little honeybees on our tumbler. I am using liquid fusion to attach these to the tumbler, just placing some on the wings and then a little piece of painter's tape to keep them in place so they don't slide down as they are drying. You can also pop these in as your final layer of epoxy is curing so they can kind of set down into the epoxy a little bit, whereas mine are sitting on top of that final layer of epoxy. You do, of course, just want to make sure that there's no imperfections in your final coat and it is almost set up so that they don't move around whenever you place your little bees. Another way to apply these is with UV resin. Just put a couple little dots on the wings and then use a UV light to cure that up so they stay in position before you move on to the next. Once all of the glue on our honeybees cured, it was finally finished. If I'm being honest, I really didn't like this tumbler when I first finished it. But then once it sat for a while and I took it outside to take photos, I really liked it. I think all of the colors played together so well. The lid just ties in with the colors of our peekaboo honeycombs and then the little bees all over just add a little something extra. I will be creating more things using the items from the PDB Creative Studio resin art box. So make sure that you do hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so you can see those projects as well. As I mentioned, all of these items are exclusive to the box, but they will very slowly trickle if there's any left over onto the PDB Creative Studio website. 
on Wednesdays at 12 p.m. MST time. Make sure you turn on that stalker status because they will be limited edition items and gone forever once they're gone. That is all for today. Thank you all so much and we'll see you next time.